Right. Well, listen, we're going to move quickly on to Natalie Tracy, who is here to talk to us about Carers Week. It's a celebration of carers in Ireland, and this is National Carers Week. Natalie, welcome to the show. Hey, Charlie. How are you today? I'm fine, and thanks for having me in again. No uh, problem at all. It's a pleasure to come over and have a chat with you, so thanks very much. No, we appreciate that. And Natalie, I, I know we, we would generally have you in uh, sometimes on the political side, but more lately it's to talk about issues such as caring and uh, acquired head injury and how we treat and look after people with those yep. particular uh, difficulties. So, Carers Week, a great wedge of people who we forget about and we take for granted, in my opinion. Absolutely. And uh, we have literally thousands of people here in Ireland. And at the last census, they were saying uh, 4.1% of the population are providing unpaid assistance to others and that was in 2011 and I would venture to guess that that number is even higher now oh, definitely. As, as people more and more people are getting older and we we saw in the UK where there was a great revolt against the Conservatives when they brought in the tried to bring in this tax or what they call dementia tax mm. which is just another indication of just how big this issue is becoming and of course your own situation Natalie you're caring for your mum mm. Yeah, well, when I say I'm caring, I, I, I wouldn't even call myself a carer, even though I, I do play a, a huge role in it, as well as me two brothers. But my father is my mum's main carer. Um, he has been looking f- after my mum full time for the last year and three months um, at home. She needs 24-7 care. As you said, it's unpaid money. What they, they get as an allowance is very little. Um, what's ironic really is that my father actually um, and my mother both of them are on long term disability before this actually even happened to my mother. So they and were in a difficult they situation. They were in a difficult situation and yeah he was deemed fit to be a full time carer but yet yeah, not deemed fit to work which is a bit ironic you know so he's good enough to, to mind my mum full time for the state but not good enough to actually participate. So on one hand they were you know and they say they want jam on both sides exactly exactly but you know it it suits them at the moment you know for my dad to look after my mum full time I do need to say that um, we've been fighting for the last two years to get my mum into rehabilitation and we got her into St. Dulix Park four weeks ago great um, which is brilliant okay well, it is and it isn't. We're, we're delighted to, uh, to have her in there because that's what our fight and our mm-hmm. battle was for, to try and get rehabilitation because um, she was um, she was offered a bed in the NRH last year, as I spoke to you the last time I was on the show. I won't go back over it. She never got that bed. So we were fighting um, with the Minister for Health uh, mm-hmm. to try and get her into some sort right. of rehabilitation. We got her in four weeks ago, as I said. Um, you know, she settled in fine, but because of the stage that she's at with her brain injury, she's not. she doesn't really have much self-awareness you know so she's not really cooperating with them because she doesn't understand that in order for problem, her to get it? better she yeah. needs to go to the gym she needs to participate in group sessions she needs to participate in the program that they have for her now they're saying it'll probably take a little bit of time you know she's already there four weeks a month to us is very very long a month in there they say is not really that long yeah. but you know it's the situation that she's in at the moment because she's trying to learn a whole new ret- routine again that my father had got her into for the yeah. last year and a half which was you know he he's an absolute hero like all carers are they give up their whole life not just their, their daily basis they give up their whole life to care for these people yeah. at home so they do it to the best of their ability but they're not trained professionals and that's the difficulty and like I, they're not trained professionals yeah. it's not fair on them and I, I, I think really one of the things that people have to uh, and I, I, I have a relative as well who's many years and I like yourself, I help. Yeah. Uh, it's professional carers who are looking after yeah. her in a residential setting. But uh, I, I, I do take an active part in that. Absolutely, I'm not there 24-7, yeah. Yeah. but I, I give time away most days to assist with that. Yeah. So I have an appreciation. Absolutely. I, I don't have the full understanding that a 24-7 carer has to go through. Yeah. Um, from my slice of experience and yours, we both appreciate just how Trojan, uh, what great work that the carers do in Ireland. Absolutely. When you're living and you see a first yeah. hand and you realise the amount of work it actually takes to it's care amazing. for somebody with a brain injury, it's a huge amount of work to ask any one person yeah. to do. You know, and you have so to admire the people who have dedicated their lives to taking care of their relatives and loved ones. And uh, National Carers Week is to understand put that understanding out there for a greater level of appreciation perhaps of the carers and through that uh, uh, creating awareness is to maybe influence official policy to give greater levels of support for those who are caring 
for our less well off members of society yeah. who are unfortunate in their circumstances. Absolutely. Well, I've, I've been, as you know, I was part of, um, I, you know, I'm part of the campaign We Need Our Heads Examined. We spoke about it before. Mm. Um, we did have a couple of meetings with the Minister and, you know, he was very helpful in assisting us and giving us the meetings. Yes. But we were, we were promised at the end of June that the policy document plan would be implemented and we're still a long way off of getting that done. So we're hoping with this week maybe to highlight that again. You know, we're looking for a follow-up meeting with the Minister. We're waiting to hear back from his office yeah. but this is all part of giving the funding that is needed to outside services yeah. not just to implement the plan but the outside services as in the carers the carers who are at home yeah. who need the help who need the extra assistance that's where that money will go yeah. to and we need that funding and uh, I suppose in the meantime as a stopgap w- we are asking the population uh, the general public out there to be aware of the great service that carers provide to the community the wider community to their own families and friends that they and relatives that they uh, would help out, and like there's a wide range of uh, charitable organisations that are helping to take care of the vulnerable yeah. and those who need care. We have Bree, we have the Care Alliance of Ireland, we have Caring for Carers Ireland, we have the DFI, MS Ireland, Parkinson's. The Alzheimer's Society. Absolutely. Where, where would carers be without them? They're absolutely the vital carers association. services. And finally, one that we're probably all familiar with, the Hospice Foundation. Yeah. And they need support. They need to operate because without them, uh, in the absence of a, a broader social safety net, which doesn't exist, as you know, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're constantly fighting to get resources put into this area. And there will be a, a, a bigger demand going into the future as we get more... Uh, the population of older people increases. But this is it, and it's not just older people, Charlie, as you know. There's 25,000 people per year in Ireland who suffer from neurological conditions. That's a wide range of neurological uh, conditions. We do tend to forget that sometimes. We really do. So when you talk about 25,000 sufferers, you can double that of the carers because it's their family most of the time that's looking after them. So it affects... Probably fifty to seventy-five thousand people a year, and, and probably even more if you if you got really down to it. Absolutely, you. I think uh, in fact uh, the numbers, the latest statistics are indicating that twenty-five thousand uh, people reach sixty-five each year in Ireland, and that number is going to grow. And with the twenty-five thousand with neurological, that's like of the twenty-five who get older. Obviously, not all of them will develop dementia, but up to a third of them will. Yeah. So between those various uh, bits and pieces, we're looking at a very substantial social demand yeah. for services that do- doesn't exist at the moment. Uh, it, it, it's patchwork at best. Absolutely. So what would you, as a care, would you feel that the understanding uh, is the first thing for people to appreciate just how big this problem is? Absolutely. And I think from just going from a brain injury sufferer, because that's my background and yeah. where I come from, not just with all the, the other people who suffer from neurological conditions um, early intervention is key it's the absolute key to this I mean we're talking about my mother two years down the road has only gone into rehabilitation now my right. father had been looking after for the last year and a half she spent eight months before that taking up a vital hospital bed in an acute hospital where somebody else could have used mm-hmm. it so when you add up all that money and the cost of that yes. if we had we have the services and the funding mm-hmm. put into that at, a, at, at an early intervention stage we wouldn't be in this position and we'd be saving the state money so instead right. of two years on it's going to cost more to rehabilitate take my mum where if she had got the services and the funding had it been available at the time six weeks after her fall it, we it wouldn't would have been this far down the road and we would have saved yeah. the state a lot of uh, money that's exactly the point I was just yeah. going to make it we would, would save people a lot of money and I, I, I'm going to focus on the carers for her because it is carers week and we talk yeah. about them and we, we will keep on the case yeah. in relation to the sufferers you know Absolutely. those who are who are living with the disability well and, it, it's, it's uh, kind the of the carers th- are th- People like yourself, your family, yeah. your friends who they're, help they're out. For, they're forgotten just as yeah. much as when, when we say that the reason why this is what we, we reckon, the reason why sufferers from neurological conditions don't get the fund is because of the quietest group, because they can't speak up for themselves. But a lot of time the carers can't either because they're so focused on looking after their family they member time. that they have not no even the energy. time, Charlie. They don't have the energy. Yeah. They don't have to fight in them. And they I'm really at, don't. I'm and looking when, at some of the stuff here and, uh, you know, again, it, it, it's the people who receive... A, the less amount of help are those you, you look you're looking at uh, only 11% of those looking after 
uh, their spouse receive the carers yeah. allowance. Like that's a small number. Yeah. A fifth of all those who are carers have no formal education. Yeah. So what this is telling me uh, is advantage has been taken of people because they're not speaking up or they're yeah. unable or d- they're unable and a good point that you've just made a point there as well about people not actually claiming or looking for um, mm. carers allowance my father was months looking after my mother before he even applied for it yeah. and two reasons was one he just hadn't got the energy to sure. fill out the forms the forms are like a, a bible in themselves the amount of documents that you have to fill out to apply for and secondly he, he seen it as he, that's his wife that's his partner that's my his duty. loved one and he felt yeah. like it's his duty yeah. and why would I be getting paid to look after my wife yeah. and a lot of them do feel this but it's not right it's a, it's a full time job they give up their lives I mean when my mum fell really on that day we lost our mum and our dad yeah. because both of them uh, on that the day when that happened the consequences that happened yeah. afterwards we lost both of them you know so his life is dedicated now to looking after the care of my mother and I, I think it's to celebrate the carers really uh, that's why the, I think I think it's something like 10 years on the go now, near enough, uh, the Carers Week. It's, it's to highlight the plight of carers Absolutely. and to celebrate the great work that they do and the selfless, selflessness yeah. of the work and their attitude. You know, they, as you said, they quietly go about the work each morning, each evening. And like even trying to get respite absolutely they can take it's a, a battle break yeah it's themselves. a battle and a fight for everything yeah. along the way and that's how they probably don't really bother because they don't have the energy these are absolute yeah. angels on earth yeah. they really are they're yeah. the unsung heroes and people don't realise the think, amount of yeah. work that they and do do you know what surprised me was uh, it's mainly ladies who are females who take care of their relatives but like a massive amount of, uh, of uh, care going like 22 percent a fifth of them are providing on average at least 43 hours of care a week yeah like that's a that's a major amount of time and effort absolutely and if anyone has ever had experience of looking after a person with a a, a particularly a, a mental disability it's very hard sometimes it requires huge patience understanding and uh, I suppose tolerance really yeah absolutely because of the person that you once knew may have no, no longer be there in mind yeah and you're always living with the hope that you're going to get that person back yeah. so you're 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 living and caring and looking after them because you always want them to progress to the next stage but as I said you're hoping that they'll come around yeah, again yeah but as yeah. I said they're not professionals they're not tra- trained professionals all they're doing is minding caring mm-hmm. and loving their loved one but yeah. they're not able to rehabilitate them and bring them to the next level and that's where we need the funds and that, that, in to help yeah, them get that's to the why next it's level so difficult yeah. really and uh, it, it's again because when we're talking about the the person who has been affected, sorry, the disabled person mm. or those affected by whatever illness it is or accident that they've had. But uh, you pointed out there when you mom had the accident, you lost not just your mom but your dad yeah, as well. Absolutely. And, and again, it's to come back to that point yeah. that uh, when something like that happens in a family, it's not just the person but those around them who That's are it. immediately affected and their quality of life. And God forbid when that person passes on the legacy is left with the carer and sometimes their health deteriorates almost as rapidly as the person they're absolutely, caring for absolutely because they're keeping every every bit of energy to put that they them. have to put into looking after yeah. them that they don't realise yeah. how much effort and, and energy it takes to look after this person and it's only yeah. when they get respite or as you said an unfortunate yeah. si- situation some pass on that they realise how much they're after being doing it's like you keep going all the time yes. because you have to keep yeah. going and this is what they're doing but as I said my, my dad's whole life revolves around mm-hmm. caring for me mum so he went from like a husband a partner um, to a carer looking after his wife yeah. full time which he's quite happy to do he adores yeah. her absolutely loves her she's so lucky oh, yeah. to have him but at Terrific. the same time you know he has a life too you know he needs to be able to just to, to breathe some days we're not talking about going out, you know, and, and having or a big going party or, or going, or going to New abroad York for a weekend or, or whatever. Yeah. We're talking about yeah. just space to sit down, have a cup of it's tea. It's what and other bread. people take for granted. Absolutely. It's like when you come home uh, Monday to Friday, for most people, they hang up their boots at the door yeah. at five o'clock on a and Friday. And that's it, it's over. And then they, they relax for the weekend. Yeah. But if you're a carer, it's... It, it's 24-7 if you have you them don't at home. Get that break. You don't get that break. And even when you do get the little break when carers come in to mm. you maybe help to assist and wash them or dress them and stuff like that, what you're trying to do is catch up on the other stuff then. So you're not taking your time out for yourself and either. And that's why, then, you know? uh, as part of Carers Week, is to highlight the plight 
of the carers yep. as, as you say, unsung heroes Absolutely. of Irish society. They really, really they are. have been for decades. And, and forgotten. Uh, they really yeah. are the forgotten people. And we need we need to highlight their plight here on uh, Community Radio and through the uh, alliance uh, of the Carers Alliance that's out there. And uh, if you Google Carers Week, you'll see that there on uh, when the material comes up. And you should take five minutes just to read it and just to give yourself a better understanding of just how dedicated the carers in Ireland are to taking care of people. But they, society has almost abandoned the carers. Yeah. They leave it up to their... They're playing almost on their goodwill, their sense of humanity. And I don't think that's good enough in 21st no, it century isn't. Ireland. There needs to be a, a, a official support mechanism at yeah. state level a more widespread a more comprehensive scheme to take care of, not just of the the individual yeah. who's affected but the, those looking after them Absolutely. to support them yeah of course look who as you said a moment ago they're not looking for anything major they just want a, a recognition well not just a recognition but actual support we have a better respite system, a better actual uh, complete package. That's it, yeah. And as I said, with those who suffer from brain injuries, early intervention, it's, it's the huge. key to all this. It really is. Well, it can save absolute millions to the state for what it's yeah. costing to care for these people in nursing homes and rehabilitation homes if the early intervention was there. I had a neighbour uh, who, whose uh, relative had unfortunately suffered a, a stroke, but the quickness of the response of the medical services in getting her, everything went well yeah. insofar as there was a quick uh, ambulance response. They were uh, identified the situation en route. They took her to the appropriate uh, hospital, who then stabilised and then transferred her to Beaumont. Yeah. And because of all those rapid interventions, that person, after uh, a very short period of time, has made a remarkable recovery that, so it yeah. shows so the it benefit shows that it of works. early intervention and that, that story that you're actually telling nearly sounds like you were telling my mum's story the whole step of the way was exactly what happened to my mum mm-hmm. but then it stopped then after six weeks care in Blanchardstown yes. Hospital and she never got the follow on rehabilitation and that was the important and bit and that was the key bit and that's yeah. what we're missing so you that's see where we need what the we're hoping is for. that yeah. someone listening out there will say okay look we need to be better at this absolutely and also when we're looking at the early intervention, we're also looking at supporting the people who are left behind, yeah. the carers, that we recognise their part in taking care of the individual and the tremendous service that they do for the state Absolutely. and society. They really do. They really you do. Know? They do a huge, huge amount of work. Right. But they're doing it because they, they, they love they their loved to. one. They want yeah. to do it, but yeah. it's just that recognition. No, it is. And, and giving them a little w- bit of breathing space We can't space be taking advantage of them like absolutely. that either, you know. Yeah, so there absolutely. has to be... Uh, well, listen, Natalie, thanks for coming in. Really appreciate it. Thanks, that. Charlie. You're I always enjoy coming welcome. in to talk to you. Yeah, love no, coming no. in to speak to you. So thanks yeah. very much for having me back. And we're delighted to have you. So we'll, we'll keep on the case, don't worry. And we won't forget. Brilliant. All right. Now, folks, uh, that was Natalie Tracy, who was talking to us about National Carers Week and the practical difficulties that carers all over the country face. So do remember them in your thoughts and in your actions down the road if they're looking for support. Uh, look them up on the website and, and uh, see if there's something you can do in a practical basis for them.